How's everybody feeling? Y'all good? We can leave right now, right? Because I know you're all good right now. Freedom has taken place. Deliverance has taken place. God is good. God is good. I got a few minutes. I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Put me on the clock. All right. Hey, so over the last three weeks, we've been talking about new beginnings, and today I want to talk to you from the subject, subject I'm all in. All right. that's, 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 I love how God does things, how everything that was taking place and what I was talking about, you got you to gotta just walk by the faith. You just got to go. You got to leave everything behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you do that, you are saying, I'm all in. So, 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 so since we had this, these, uh, these recommitments, almost like these vow renews with these, 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 uh, marriages. I, I want, I, I want the, I want the, the, the husband and the wife just to look at each other and say, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. So I need you to tell them with some conviction. Tell them, tell them like you mean it. Tell them like you mean it. Tell them like yeah, so I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Babe, babe, I'm all in. 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 So, 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 being that none of you guys are, 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 are like, intentionally, intentionally lie, that meant that just because she make you mad, just because he make you mad, just because they do something you don't like, you still, you, you just told them, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Hello, I'm, 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 I'm all in. Hey, listen, so you guys all like to share a story, so I'm going to share a story with you real quick, okay? Hadn't done this in a while, right? So I'm all in. I'm going to give you an illustration of I'm all in. Some of you guys may have heard this before. This is called Burn Your Ship. And so in 1519, there was a captain by the name of Hernando Cortez. And he had a mission that he was sent on. And it was going to take him from Cuba to the Yucatan Peninsula. Peninsula. And so what he was going to do was he was traveling to a place that had jewelry and, and all kind of treasures and gold and artifacts, all these things. And so he left with 500 soldiers, 100 sailors, 16 horses on 11 ships. And so he was going to the land to take all these, try and conquer all this treasure and gold and artifacts. But the challenge was other people knew about it as well. So this treasure and this gold had been protected by this particular place for over 600 years. And nobody had ever had been able to conquer it. So he takes off sailing across the sea and he arrives at the shore. And he does something very profound. So when the men get off the ship, he gives this commandment. He said, burn the ships. Burn the ships. And he looks back and tells the men, the only way we get back home, the only way you get back to see your wife and kids, the only way you get back to the ones you love is if we take this land and we take their ships and we go back home on their ships. All right. All right. The only way you make it to the next level is you burn your ship. The only way you experience the next level, oh God, is you burn your ship. On, the only way, the only way, the only way you're gonna make it out of this thing that you're in is you burn your ship. Now here's the thing, here's the thing, Here, here's what we're gonna extract from that story is this. Is this. Why did he succeed and many others did not? It's as simple as this. They had no choice. Yeah, yeah. That's you, sometimes we give ourselves too many options. 
sometimes we give ourselves a plan B. But let me say this. God, with God, there's no plan B. God said, I'm still on A. And sometimes we go to plan B, so we get out of alignment with God. Sometimes we just got to be all in. Uh -huh. Another thing is this is they, they, they didn't settle for why they could, why they could not do it. They looked at it from the perspective of why we can do it and why we have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be all in in the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You experience the next level of God, you gotta be all, all in. in. I say this all the time. You can't stay where you are. You cannot stay where you are and experience God at the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can't stay where you are and experience God at the next level. So you gotta be all in. All all the way. Y'all know how it is. Y'all back in the DC days, that means before Christ, y'all would say, I'm, 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 I'm going all in tonight. I'm turning up tonight. Y'all know, yeah, yeah. So you got to burn your ship. You got to be a group of people whose level of commitment is beyond the ordinary commitment. You got to be all in. Your level of commitment has to be beyond the usual, beyond the effort that you used to give, beyond the effort that you usually give, beyond the right, effort right. that you're used to. You gotta go beyond that. You gotta go beyond that. So let me give you a scripture, Ephesians 3, 20. Ephesians 3, 20. You read this one last week, right? It says, now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all, more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. According to the power that is within us. Let me tell you what that word immeasurably means. It means incapable of being measured. It meant it's limitless. When you are dealing with God, you are dealing with an unlimited God. He's not limited to time. God is not limited to your situation. He's not limited to your problem. He's not limited to any of those things. He's unlimited. He goes beyond your limitations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes beyond that. And so... I want to tell you about this. I want to. I'm, I'm reminded of of uh, of this right here. Before I get ready for you, you got to understand that when you're all in, when you burn your ship, <coughs> Psalms 46 and one says this. It says, "You are not alone. God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble." Some translations say he's your ever he's your ever present help in your time of need. So you are not alone. You got you got to recognize that when you say God, I'm all in with you. I'm living with you. I'm, I, it's no turning back. That you got to realize that God is your ever present help in your time of trouble. You got to understand. Number two is this: He will guide you. Psalm thirty-seven twenty-three says this. It says the steps of the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Some translations say the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So when you begin to say, God, I'm all in with you, I'm going in with you, God will order your steps. You just got to begin to go that way. Yes, yes. The third thing is this. Psalm 37, 4 and 5 says this. It says, take the light in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Commit your way to the Lord. Yeah. Trust in him. And he will do this. I need to clarify something right here. It, when he says, delight yourself in the Lord, that means you get in alignment with God. You get on his level of thinking. You get on what he desires for you. And then yeah. when you know what he wants, you will have the desires of your heart. Now, now, you don't get everything you want or everything you desire. All right, all right. Because if God did that, he, he would be a good daddy. All right. See, you don't give your kids everything they want to do. Because right. you know that everything they want is not for their good. That's right. It's not for their good. God gives you what you need. Right. Thank you, God. Yep. Yeah. 
119.105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God, God's word lights up the way for you to go. He gives you sound direction. We got to just be focused. We just got to be in alignment. We got to have enough self-discipline to do what he says and walk that way. God doesn't have to come down off the, off the throne to, to make the way. He, he said he is the way. And he sent his word to show us the way. Once we get in alignment with that, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, y'all need to write all this down, go back and study on it. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says this, it says, however, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God that God has prepared for those who love him. There's no, no, no eye to see, no ear to turn the things that God yes, has for those God. that love him. Yes, God. So God is saying, hey, if you walk my way, do what I ask you to do, do what I tell you to do, that you, like, you can't even imagine the things I have for you. You don't even, God says, you don't even know. Like, we think we know, but we really don't know. We hear about the rose gold, we hear about all these things. And God said, you don't even really know. You, don't even, you can't even imagine what I really have for you. Man, think about that. He says, like, you you really can't imagine what I have for you. You really can't. I know you hear about it. I know you've heard about it. He said, but you really can't imagine what I have for you. So we're talking about I'm all in. I want to take you to a scripture real quickly. I'm reminded about the story of Abraham in Genesis 11. Genesis 11, I'm going to read verses 27 through 32. Verse 27 reads, This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, which his name later changes to Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran became the father of Lot. Y'all need to remember that. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, in the land of his birth. Verse 29 says, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarah, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarah was childless because she was not able to conceive. Verse 31. It says, Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarah, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. Now here's what you need to get. When you are all in, in this journey that you on, I don't know if you guys know the history of about this, but it says that it says that he started out on the journey, but he settled. He started out on the journey, but he settled for something less than what God had for him. I'm not talking to somebody. Hey, have you you been you been saying, hey, you say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And it can be a, a, a even a, a vision from God. It can be a revelation from God. And right as you get in the middle of that thing, just because life hits you, you settle. I said this before. That, that Mike, Mike Tyson said, everybody had, had, had uh everybody that got in the ring with him had a plan until he punched him in the face. Yeah, yeah. See, everybody that got in the ring with him had a plan until he punched him in the face. And that's what life does. Man, we start out with so much zeal, say, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to, I'm all in. I'm going I'm to, man, I'm going to complete this task. I'm going to do it all. And then life happens. And you just settle right there. The Bible says that he did not receive the promise because he settled. Wow. He settled. 
27. Let me give y'all that. This is my main scripture, my call scripture right here. Let me get Genesis. Genesis 12. Genesis 12, 1 through 7. I'm going to read you this real quick. It says, the Lord has said to Abram. Who did he say it to? Abram. He said it to Abram. He says, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. So what he was saying, he said, I need you to leave your familiarity. I need you to leave that thing that you're used to. I need you to leave what you are used to doing, and I'm going to take you to something better. That's what he was saying. He said, I will make you, and then he made a covenant yeah, yeah. with it. He said, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Verse 3, he says, I will bless those that bless you. I need you guys to remember that. We're going to talk about that one. He says, I will bless those who bless you, and I, and whoever, whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. Wow. It says, so Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Verse 5, it says he took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all of the possessions they had accumulated, and the people, and they had acquired in Haran. It says, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Marah at Sepha. At, at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Last verse, it says, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land so he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Somebody say, I'm all in. 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 Imagine this. God tells you to leave the thing that you are used to. Here's what you got to get about the background of Abram, Abram at that time. You know, Abram, uh, he, he, he lived in a pagan place. He lived where... Uh, that the people that he was around, they served idols. Man, they served things that wasn't of God. They served man-made objects, wooden objects. They served all these things. They didn't serve the true and living God. You know how you see in Scripture that and sometimes you read the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was the true living God. Now, it was many gods in the Old Testament, many gods all throughout the Bible. We know that God is not God's name. God is simply a title. It simply means the sufficient one, the all-sufficient one. Meaning that he don't need your help, he don't need my help, he do whatever he wants. God says, we, if, you don't, if you don't stop, he'll make the rock cry out. So, so he says that he is the all-sufficient one. God gives Abraham this commandment. He says, if you do this, then great things are going to happen to you. I'm going to make your name great, like like all the, the, the people of the earth are going to be blessed through you. All you got to do is go. What if God made that deal with you? Everything that you are familiar with, everything that you are comfortable with, he says, if you leave this place, I'm really going to make you great. Some of us think we got it good, but we haven't seen God's death yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, of us, some of us think we got it good, but you haven't seen God's death yet. So God says, leave that place. I'm going to show you something. And we know for the sake of time, we know that the Bible declares that Abraham was a friend of God because he trusted in God. He trusted what God said. He believed in it. And the Bible says that he called Abraham a friend of God. So the first thing I want to give you is when you are all in, we're saying all in, your decisions dictate destiny. The decisions dictate destiny. Decisions dictate destiny. If you look at Genesis 12, 1 and 2, we just read that one. It says, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you to a great nation. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. At that point in time, Abraham had a choice to make. He had a decision to make. He, uh, he could have said, no, I'm familiar with where I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. comfortable where yeah, I yeah. am. Some of us do this. We, we know how it is. We had that example of, of, you know, you heard somebody say, my room is junky, my desk is junky, but I know where everything is. Sometimes we get comfortable in our junk. 
and we would rather stay right there rather than, than, than to move on to something more comfortable. Yeah. We would rather stay right there because we are familiar with it. We know how to manage our mess. We know how we know how to get by with having just enough. We know how to get by with saying, okay, I can pay half of this, and they won't cut that off, and then I can do this. No, God, hey, I say this all, I'm, I'm going to keep saying that God is not satisfied where you are because God doesn't want you to settle for average because average doesn't change what? It don't change nothing. Average don't change nothing. Average don't change nothing. We don't serve an average God. We serve a big God. We serve, serve a God who is able to do anything but fail. He's not average. So he's not satisfied with where you are because he's not an average God. So your decisions dictate destiny. When God gives you a vision, when he gives you something to do, you got a decision to make. And what decision that you make will determine the outcome of your situation. That's like the situation you're in right now. It may be bad. It may not be good. It may be a dire situation. But the decision that you make on how you will receive that situation is determine how it turns out. You may not have the resources that you think you need. You may not have the wherewithal that you think you need. You may not even have the people that you need, but you you got to say, I'm all in. God, if you said it, then it's so. Hey, I told you this. How it happens is none of your business. If God told you to do it, then you just do it. When you begin to walk that way, a way will be made out of yeah, nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to begin walking. That's what, Abram, that's what Abram did. God tells him to strike out. He just started walking. God says, go to a land and I will show you. He did not know where he was going. God just kept him to go. He just takes off walking. How many of you have that type of faith? Well, God tells you to go. You don't know where you're going, but you just start walking that way and things yes. begin to happen. Yes. Things begin to happen just because you get in alignment with the word of God. Yes. Things begin to flow smoothly when you get in alignment with the word of God. Things begin to happen. You know what they say? That's where the magic happens? That's where the magic happens when you line up with the word of God. When you get in harmony with the word of God, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. So decisions dictate destiny. Your decisions dictate destiny. Here's what happened. Here's what happened real quickly, real quickly. I, I can't go through the whole thing for the sake of time. But most of the time, most of the time we make decisions based off how we feel. Most of the time we make decisions based off our emotions. And sometimes that would get us in a lot of trouble. It would cause us to make the wrong decisions. But here's, here's I'm going to give you a few things, a few things that jot them out real quick. Here's what we should be making our decisions off of. I think I said this out to the team a few days ago. But we got to make our decisions based off our calling. You make your decisions based off the calling upon your life. Let me give you a little bit of Bible behind that. In the book of John, John 13, with Jesus, he's just about to go to his, uh, uh, be crucified. He knows, he knows. And so the Bible declares that he tells his disciples about what's going to happen. Then it says that he prepares himself pulled the robe off himself, wrapped himself in the top, and he began to wash the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. Hey, and this, and this is, and, and check this out. And then, in John 13, 20, 21, he knows that Judas is going to betray him. He knows all this. And, and when he sees Judas, he tells Judas this, he says, whatever you are about to do, do it quickly. Whatever you are about to do, do it quickly. Whatever you are about to do, do it quickly. Why would you do that when it's, you know this guy is about to betray you? He's going to point you out. He's going to do all these things so that the Roman soldiers will see, oh, this is the guy, and they're going to take him hostage because uh, he knew his call. Yeah. He knew what he was sent for. When you know who you are, you know what to do. When you know who you are, you know what not to do. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you, when you know who you are and what you were meant called to do, all the little frivolous stuff, the distractions that come in, right. we won't let it so easily distract us because we know that's not going to help us get to where God has called us to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When you know your calling. So you make decisions, first of all, based off your calling. Second reason, second way you make decisions is this. You make, this, you make decisions 
based off your assignment. Based off your assignment. The third way you make decisions is this. You, do, you make decisions based off your purpose. And the last thing is, is this, you, you make decisions based off the season that you are in. You gotta make decisions based off the season that you're in. Let me give you an example of that right there. If it's 100 degrees outside in the middle of summer, your decision should be not to wear a coat. Amen. Now if it's 100 below zero, then you, make a you need to make a decision, you need to cover yourself up, you need to put on some clothes, you need to dress appropriately for the season that you are in. Some of us make decisions sometimes that are out of season. Mm. They are out of season. Yes. We got to get in alignment with what God is doing. So decisions dictate destiny. Point two is this. Fact number two is this. It says that God's plans comes with benefits. God's plans comes with benefits. Genesis 12 and 3. In Genesis 12 and 3 it says this. It says that God gives Abram a commandment and he says I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those and whoever curses you I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So here's the thing you got to realize that when God gives you something to do he says that your haters can't mess with you. Your enemies can't come against you. That's something. He says that, that the weapons may be formed, but they will not prosper. He says anybody that messes with you, they don't have to mess with me. He says that I will bless those who bless you. That's provision. Look at God gives you a vision. He brings provision with. He says I will bless those who bless you. And whoever messes with you, I'm going to mess with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then he says that all the people on earth are, will be blessed through you. Do you know you, that you are the seed of Abraham and you are blessed to be a blessing? That when God gives you something to do that, can't, no man, can't nobody stop it. He says that, that whoever helps you along the way, whoever bless you, I'm going to bless them. So y'all better be helping somebody because you help them and God gonna bless you as well. But 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 he says that if whoever curses you, I'ma curse them. And all the nations of the earth, the people of the earth are gonna be blessed through you. So you gotta realize that when God gives you something to do, that it comes with provision. All heaven and earth is backing you up. You ain't gotta wonder how it's gonna happen. You ain't gotta wonder if you gonna have enough resources. You ain't gotta wonder if you got the right people. You ain't got to wonder about none of this stuff. I, I, I appreciate all of you guys being here. We first started this four years ago, me, my wife, and kids. Now look what God is doing. Amen. Now look what God is doing. And we, did, we, we, we ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. We ain't seen nothing yet. I'm excited about the next level. I'm excited about what God is doing. We haven't seen anything yet. You can't let your past keep you from your future. You cannot let your past keep you from your future. You can't, you can't allow what happened, what they said, what they did, and, and who did and who didn't do what, all this stuff. You can't allow it to keep you from your future. Third thing is this. When you all in. When you all in, you gotta remember this. When you feel like quitting, you gotta remember why you started. When you feel like quitting, because listen, you're gonna have some of those days when you feel like quitting. You're gonna have some of that, some of those days when you are just not motivated. You're gonna have some of those days you like, man, this is not worth it. It ain't worth all this. I didn't ask for all this. I didn't see this in the little fine yeah, print yeah, on that contract yeah, yeah. that I signed all this stuff. Yeah. It's not worth that. She acting crazy, he acting crazy, it ain't worth that. Yeah. You gonna feel like quitting. But you got to know, don't you agree with me, husband wife, don't you agree with me? <laughs> Look for your head, don't agree with me. All right. 
But you got to remember why you started. You got to you gotta remember your why. Your why has to be bigger than your why not. Your why has to be huge. Sometimes you just got to outlast the trouble. Yeah. You got to outlast that thing sometimes. You, you may come out beat up and all kind of stuff, but you just got to outlast that thing yeah. sometimes. So when you feel like quitting, you got to remember why. You gotta remember why you started in the beginning. You gotta stay attached to your why. You gotta re you gotta remind yourself daily of why. Wow. You gotta remind yourself why you do what you do. Yeah. You gotta remind yourself of the end result. You gotta yeah. remind yourself that yeah. it's worth it. You gotta remind yeah. yourself of the reward. You gotta remind yourself how sweet it's gonna be when you get to the end. Yes. It, may, it may be bitter right now, but you gotta remind yourself when you get to the end of this thing, you gonna come out looking like gold. Yes, God. You gotta remind yourself of why you started. Why you started from the beginning. You gotta remind yourself. In Genesis 12, one and seven. I'm sorry, Genesis 12 and seven. Genesis 12 and seven. God reminded Abraham of why. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord whom had appeared to him. You gotta remember why you do what you do. You got to remember that sometimes it's not all about you but it's about those that are coming behind you. It's about your children, it's about their family, it's about those that are connected to you. So you got to remind yourself why. Why? Why? You got to remind yourself why. You're saying I'm all in. You got to understand these two things, your decisions dictate destiny. Your decisions dictate how this thing turns out. You gotta remind yourself of that. Number two, you gotta remember that God's plans come with benefits. Everything that you need, all the resources, all that stuff, this day I'm just waiting on you. Sometimes you say things like, I'm just waiting on God, but God says, no, I'm waiting on you. When you get to yourself out on what I call you to do, then things will happen. And third thing is you gotta re remember, when you feel like quitting, you gotta remember why you started. Why you started in the first place. And you got to keep that why before you. So I simply wanted to encourage you on today that you got to be all in. You got to be all in. You got to be all in. Do we have anybody in here who's all in? Yeah. We got anybody in here who's all in. And if, 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 listen, listen, listen. If you haven't been, that's okay. But today is a new day. Today is a new day. Today is the day you need to start to say, I'm all in. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it looks like. doesn't matter what it sounds like. I'm all in. I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made, Lord God. And I thank you that we have a new found faith, oh God, that we have a new commitment unto you in the name of Jesus, that we are all in in this thing for you, God. We are all in in this journey for you, Lord God. The Lord, that we won't fall short of the destination that you called us to, that we won't settle for anything than, than your best in the name of Jesus. We won't settle for being average, oh God, because you have called us to, uh, to greatness in the name of Jesus. And so we will walk in it wholeheartedly in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that everything that we need to be, everything that you called us to be that is waiting on us in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you and we bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, so on today, I just want to... Um, Give an invitation that if, if anybody in here who hasn't said, I'm all in with Jesus, if you haven't, haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would love to pray with you. I would love to lead you in prayer. If that be you, slip your hand up. I would love to pray with you. If that's you, slip your hand up. I'd love to pray with you. Amen. Well, look like we have a, had a believers meeting in here. And we listen to maybe come out on social media who accepted that. So if you will, just pray with me. Father God, 
it is written in your word, if I confess my heart, and be, um, I'm sorry, if I confess with my mouth and, and believe in my heart that Jesus died and that he rose from the grave, then I shall be saved. So right now, I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I'm a new creation in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you accepted that prayer uh, and pray that prayer, then welcome to the very own family of God. Amen, amen, amen. Also, at this time, if anybody in here uh, heard anything, they want to partner with this local ministry. If you want to partner with MOCI, help us take this community, this region, this nation for Jesus. If that be you, please raise your hand, and we will talk to you about next steps as well. If that's you, raise your hand, and we'll talk to you about next steps as well.